All right, so we are doing review for test number one in ERT 107, the safety course. Uh, the test is going to be two weeks from now. Practice test is going to be uh, this coming Friday. So, important things about the test. First of all, whenever you get a test, read all the instructions. Please read all the instructions before you begin. Uh, on this test, there will be no backtracking. What that means, is it's an online test. But this means you will be presented with a question. You must answer that question, save it, and move on. You cannot go backwards uh, once you do that. So you have no ability to see all the questions or only ever presented with one question at a time. It is going to be time sensitive. So 20 questions in about 30 minutes. So about a minute and a half per question. Uh, so you will need to go fast. The reason we do this is to prevent you from having the ability to look things up. So you need to be able to think and answer things quickly. Uh, you must start the test within the time window that is given. This is going to be between 2 a.m. No, that is p.m. Make sure that is right. Uh, between 2 and 2.30, you're going to have 30 minutes from the time you start to complete it. Everything is going to be multiple choice matching or ordering. Uh, and make sure you have some scrap paper and a pen pencil to do uh, anything you need to do just for figuring out things for yourself uh, offline. Uh, you don't want to be searching for those things after you start the test because you're going to lose time by doing that. So have that ready when you begin. So have some scrap paper and a pen with you. So what do you need to know? Uh, so we're going to go through all these topics today very quickly. First, have a good understanding of the shop and lab rules and why these rules exist. That's all available uh, on the Blackboard site. You have, should have done a sign-off for that already as well. And there is a video that explains all that on our page as well. Have a good understanding of the shop PPE requirements. Understand the differences between hazards and risks. And be able to list hazards and risks associated with various job functions. So here's a whole bunch of terms you should know. Definition of a hazard. Definition of adverse health effect. Uh, some stuff here about hazards. The definition of chronic versus acute. Know that. Why do hazards exist? and lots of different types of hazards know what these are okay so mechanical electrical thermal noise vibration radiation all those things the definition of a risk know this there's an example for you uh, and that is basically for hazards and risks be able to identify different hazards risks in the work situations and some of the the, uh, the various common hazards and warning labels so if you're given a situation like this, be able to identify different hazards and risks here, like, hey, this guy, this is an ergonomic hazard right here. He's lifting something heavy without bending his knees. Uh, this guy is using something that can cause an abrasion hazard. This guy is incorrectly using compressed air. This guy is standing on top of a bunch of barrels. That presents a fall hazard. Okay know the different uh, symbols for things so symbols for entanglement can look like that or like that crush shear impact draw in or nip point a puncture or stab abrasion so know all those different things and then we got into risk reduction and risk assessment after this uh, when do we assess risks, different task analysis, and machine limits that might be important for doing this. We have this chart for evaluating risk, and this is the big one here. So we did a lot of examples with this, where you basically look at a risk and decide whether it was a serious or slight injury, if it was infrequent and it was not likely, that puts you right about here. Uh, at this level here of risk between high and low and this would be your recommended risk reduction strategy 
that we talked about the different risk reduction strategies and implement them we talked about elimination and substitution most effective one just get rid of the hazard completely we talked about engineering controls things like putting barrier guards around things it's an engineering control we talked about awareness means using signs using lights using horns things like that we talked about training and administrative procedures we talked about personal protective equipment the least effective of all the risk reduction strategies so that's them listed there from most effective to least effective we talked about what do we need mean by serious or slight so if you consider a fatality as serious first aid as slight uh, if you can justify your answer anywhere between these uh, two extremes so if you say broken bone broken bone where is that going to fall is that it's not a fatality it's not first aid but which one is it more like I would probably say that probably tends to be more on the serious side okay but you would need to be able to justify your rationale for that frequent versus infrequent frequent is something we tend to mean it is something where you're doing this every couple seconds or every part that I'm on a machine cycle infrequent something that's more of a maintenance function so you're going to rarely do that and likely avoidance versus unlikely avoidance if you have to reach really close to a hazard or if it's something that moves like a robot where it's kind of sneaks up onto you and it moves really fast and quiet it is really hard to avoid those things that is probably unlikely if it's something that moves really slow and loud you could easily step out of the way of it uh, if it is something where you have to reach near it but not really that close like if you're 18 inches away from it that's probably you have a very likely chance to avoid it so that's what likely avoidance would be so we talked about some different COVID-19 things. So we talked specifically COVID-19, what is the hazard? The hazard is the virus, what is the risk? Death or illness. exposure to infected people so evaluate this let's say you're going to college under normal conditions let's start over here that is a serious hazard your exposure would be frequent chances of avoiding not likely that is very high risk if we were doing no protective measures at the college this is where you would end up so what are some things that we did at the college for this elimination substitution the best example we have there online classes basically getting all the people off campus an engineering control that would do this we talked about you see lots of plexiglass barriers around right now that's an example of an engineering control to separate people to reduce that hazard and awareness means you see lots of signs you see uh, arrows on the floors training and procedures you all had to do online training so we all have different training now that we do for COVID and PPE one obvious one here everyone has to wear a mask everywhere okay so that is five different types of strategies that have been used to try to reduce that and what we see from all of those things being implemented together we cannot change the severity of the injury it is still serious but what we have done your exposure to the virus now is infrequent instead of frequent and your possibility of avoidance is probably now 
likely. And that puts us down here as opposed to up here. So we have reduced the risk by some of the measures that we've taken uh, this semester for the risk of COVID-19. So that's one good example that you're living every day uh, that shows you an example of risk assessment. And we did a bunch of other case studies here. I like case studies like this. So these types of questions I do like. So work through those and figure those out for yourself again. If you want to watch the videos on those too, that would be very helpful to you. And then last week's lesson, we were talking about safety circuits. So no difference between normally open, normally closed, and how a relay works. Understand how the start-stop circuit works, that simple start-stop circuit, and be able to explain the following concepts, open versus closed, single and dual channel, and monitoring. So we had a bunch of great examples we had here, and then we got into the difference between normally open, normally closed. We showed normally open, normally closed, working like that. And then we did a bunch of examples here. And then we said for our safety circuits, we should know that on a safety circuit, typically we want to have normally closed. We want to work in pairs or have redundancy. And we want our signals to always be in agreement with each other. And we want to have some form of monitoring that a way that we can tell if the system is trying to be jumpered out or defeated. This is a relay. This is a basic building block. Of industrial circuits we basically have an electromagnet and a mechanical contact that works against a spring so as you can see here coil energizes contact moves against the spring lots of examples of relays this one here has four different normally open one normally closed contact. A contactor is like a big relay that can handle a higher current and more cycles. Probably has a much heavier spring in it and much beefier contacts that can handle more current going through them. And this is our simple safety circuit. So remember here, CR1, 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 these are all one device. So if I was to draw that, like we just had on the previous thing there, we would have a coil like this, and then we would show a normally open and a normally open contact. So all within one device. That is basically what we are showing here. So coil energizes and closes these contacts. That's what's going to happen here. So basically closes, energizes, and when we get that, got my highlighter here. When that closes, we now have power flow all the way across here. And when we get that power flow here, we now get it through here as well. And we get power all the way here and power goes to whatever this equipment is over here. Whatever this thing is. So we get power all the way to there. If we try to open that circuit so when we de-energize that, I'm looking over top of my camera to see where I'm going here. If we de-energize this, so we break this here, basically we release that start button. Our circuit is still maintained because we have this path going through here. The only time this breaks is if we actually push this e-stop button. That breaks this. And that breaks all of this, breaks our power here, breaks our power here. That opens this now, and now breaks our power here, and we no longer have power going to the equipment. So this is our simple start-stop circuit. The problem with this is that there are several points of failure 
possible here. So point of failure number one. Uh, if this e-stop were to fail, then when you energize this circuit, you have no way of breaking it if that button doesn't work anymore. Or if someone were to just come through and put a jumper wire here, they have disabled your circuit, that e-stop will not work. Once you start it, you cannot stop it. Another thing, if this, con this relay were to fail and stay failed in the closed state, then this will always be closed and this will always be closed. And regardless of pushing these buttons, you're always going to have power across here. Your equipment, you have no way to break that. The other thing would be if this one relay contact here were to close and fail in the closed state itself, that would be the same thing. You have no way to break this. So there's three different potential sources of failure there. Okay which means that this is not the ideal circuit to be using in a situation like this. Uh, for low level or low risk situations, the circuit is okay. For more higher risk situations, it is not. Okay, so that is basically everything we've done so far. Uh, review the individual lessons leading up to this one, and that should put you in good shape for the practice test, and then you'll figure out for the practice test where you're what you need to work on, and we can go from there. Anyway, that's it for this week. There is no assignment for this week. It is basically prepare for the practice test. Thank you.